So, we will come back again. So, before going to the example 6, uh, just from the book, I would like to show you that V string, right? When will uh, this is your uh, what you call this is your V ka V connection of the insulator. Look, this side once one uh, string, this is another string, and conductor is connected here. When we will study corona, I will show you the uh, that cor corona how things are happening. At that time, also, I will take from a book the photograph they have taken. At that time, I will show you. So, this is your V string and that your grading uh, ring, right? Whatever numericals we have done for grading ring, also, I am showing just hold on before proceeding to the next example. Just hold on that different type of grading rings are there. Look, uh, this is not photograph, but uh, it is drawing actually. Look, the grading ring at the bottom of the string. Look, this grading ring is there. Here also, look, different type. This is also grading ring is there. Right. So, this is how if you look at the your what you call at that uh, your transmission tower, you will find these things are there. Right. This is just to show you that how things are. So, next we will come to the example 6. So, in a 6 unit suspension insulator string, the capacitance between each link pin and R is 0 0.10 of the self capacitance of each unit you have to determine the voltage across the lowest unit as a percentage of the total voltage and also the string efficiency right so that is the that is your problem now uh, we have already derived that we know that your vx upon v is equal to sin hyperbolic x root k divided by sin hyperbolic n root k now for x is equal to n, v n is equal to v. Therefore, we can write v n minus 1 upon v is equal to sin hyperbolic n minus 1 root k divided by sin hyperbolic n root k. Now, voltage across the lowest unit is given by small v n is equal to capital V n minus capital V n minus 1. So, you substitute that is you v n is equal to v and v n minus 1 is equal to v into sin hyperbolic n minus 1 root k divided by sin hyperbolic n root k. Now, only you have to recall these formulas. Now, it is given that n is equal to 6. So, k is equal to 0 0.1. So, root over k is 0.3162. Therefore, sin hyperbolic n minus 1 into root k is equal to sin hyperbolic 5 root k. So, root k is equal to 0 0.316 you multiply 5 into this one and then take sin hyperbolic of this it will become 2.3273 right and sin hyperbolic 6 root k when n is equal to 6 it will become 3.2591 therefore, small v n by capital V is equal to 1 minus sin hyperbolic 5 root k upon sin hyperbolic 6 root k substitute all these values you will get v n upon v that is 0.2859. N means that nth insulator that the a, a, that is the last one last piece which is near to the conductor. So, that is small v n. So, it is 0.2859 therefore, string efficiency will be capital V divided by n into small v n, but v n by v is equal to 0.2859. So, therefore, it is 1 upon 6 into 0.2285 because if you take the reciprocal of it, it will be 1 upon n into v n upon capital V, v n upon capital V small v n upon capital V is this one. Therefore, it is coming roughly around uh, 58.29 percent right that is the string efficiency. So, next uh, you will we'll come to the selection of insulation. So, basically the insulation level it affects the cost and reliability of high voltage considerably. So, normal operating and transient voltages are the primary consideration in selecting the insulation for a line, right. So, operating as well as transient voltage are the primary consideration, both you have to look in selecting the insulation for a line. So, that is transient over voltage, we will see those things later. Right. The transient voltages include switching and lighting surges. So, when sufficient insulation is provided for switching and lighting surges, power frequency voltage requirements are satisfied. Right. So, 
sufficient insulation will be provided by switching a lightning charges, particularly when you are designing everything, you have to take into account and accurate calculation is required. Next is the magnitude of switching charge charges is 2.5 to 3 times to normal voltage. So, that means the that means the insulation or in it should sustain that kind of high voltage right. So, that is 2.5 to 3 times the normal voltage that way you have to design. Next is that your switching charges assume greater importance above 230 kV insulation requirement in our country 220 kV or above right 220 then 400 kV line. So, 220 kV 30 kV insulation requirements. Now, on the lines up to 230 kV lightning is the major factor to decide the amount of insulation because lightning stroke is very common phenomena in our country everywhere all over the world right and and you have to you have to protect all these things uh, on the light uh, lightning is the major factor to decide the amount of insulation all uh, if, if lightning stroke is there on the top of a tower then you do not know how how much it can affect to the your equipments or apparatus at the substation so lot of protection is required you have lightning arrested and other things but anyway so so lightning is the major factor to decide the amount of insulation for everything then lightning uh, lightning inclusion uh, sorry li lightning insulation requirements depend on other factor also like tower footing resistances then number of uh, your ground wires and conductor configuration etc so, tower footing resistance, the number of ground wires, all these things are required because grounding is another important factor. So, this lightning surges is very you know uh, important phenomena in power system. And final choice of the number of insulate uh, insulator for a line is also dictated by the atmospheric conditions, then temperature and altitude of the place. So, so many factors are associated that your what you call for number of insulators for a line. So, all these are the these are the these are your like something like your uh, general knowledge that we need all you need all all, all, all sort of uh, all sort of things to know before uh, making that your choice choosing the correct insulator for a particular uh, voltage level. Next is that atmospheric this atmospheric condition affect considerably the flash over voltages it is very important particularly for insulators. Weight conditions cause flash over at flash over at lower voltages also particularly during rainy season right this can create problem. So, this flash over uh, I mean I do not know whether you have observed or not many times I have observed that flash over is uh, happening particularly during rainy season even in the railway traction line any railway platform uh, sometimes you can observe that some flash over is going on. So, this, this I have seen somewhere that it is happening right. So, dirty and wet surfaces of the insulator allow the leakage currents to flow over them resulting in flash over naturally if, if dirty and wet surfaces are there. So, uh, the of the insulator it will allow leakage currents because it gets a conducting path therefore, possibility of flash over is there, but it does not generally it does not spoil the insulator right it is insulator can withstand such kind of a flash over. So, flash over voltage is proportional to the length of the leakage, leakage path right if uh, I mean directly proportional to the length of the leakage path. Next one is that spacing of conductors you have seen for transmission line uh, 33 kV, 66 kV, 132 kV or 220 kV or above you have seen different type of conductor spacings are there also in each phase you can see two conductors or four conductors are there in each phase. Recently I went somewhere I found that four conductors are there in each phase and you know why you use that two conductors or four conductors or even more for high tension transmission line that uh, why we use that. So, spacing of conductors so travel piece surface re service requires proper spacing of conductors. The conductor should be so spaced that corona loss is minimum this corona loss we will see later right after this uh, after cable clean will first next we will cover cables after cables we will go to your what you call that transient over voltage and insulation coordination after that we will come to corona. So, that corona loss is minimum and they do not clash your during swinging and vibration that means, conductor spacing should be such that that even, even during storm or wind they should not your clash with each other 
right. So, it should be you have to see that the spacing of the conductors you have to design accordingly and those conductors when connected tower to tower through your insulation you have to see the vibration will be less. So, there are many no direct no direct formula is there for conductor spacing there is no direct formula, but some empirical formula for formula for conductor spacing s are given by there look so many I have uh, whatever I have got I have brought it here one is the spacing should be may be 0 0.75 your uh, root over delta uh, plus v square by your uh, this thing 2000 right. So, they this this actually will give some some kind of ideas right. So, that why another is s is equal to 2 delta then sin theta then uh, your uh, what you call another is s is equal to 0 0.65 root delta plus 0 0.007 and then s is equal to 0 0.75 root delta plus v upon 150. This way so many your what you call uh, your uh, so many uh, formula this thing empirical formulas are there. So, when you design they have to choose uh, you know the proper spacing this formula may serve as a guide to your calculate conductor spacing temperature ice and wind also affect the final choice that ice wind will see still sag and tension right during that uh, sag and tensile cal calculation we will see that uh, your uh, this uh, sag your this thing what you call that uh, this temperature this ice and wind call uh, calculation. So, uh, call, uh, your consideration uh, this also affect the final choice. So, so many different uh, logic is there uh, different uh, form empirical formulas are available, but no direct formula or proof at least I have not got it anywhere. So, whatever I have got these are the certain things right. Now, here one question to you that what is delta V you know and what is L right. So, this is a this is a question to you I did not write for you, but and also 2 delta uh, 2 delta sin theta everything has been taught, but before that. So, this is an exercise for you right. So, you should find out then uh, next is this this is an exercise for you I have not solved this problem, but I am giving it to you when we will go through this uh, video lecture at that time we will do it. For example, a voltage V is applied across a string of n cap and pin type in n, n cap and pin type insulator suspended from an earth cross arm of a tower. The capacitance between the cap and pin of each ins insulator is capital C and the capacitance of each pin to earth is capital C 0 suffix 0. So, that the voltage across the insulator unit nearest to the line terminal is this that means V n you have to find out small v suffix n is equal to V into sin hyperbolic n gamma minus sin hyperbolic n minus 1 into gamma divided by sin hyperbolic n gamma, where we have given something that sin hyperbolic gamma by 2 is equal to half root over capital C 0 by C, C 0 by C this is given. So, based on that you have to your what you call you have to prove this that small v n is equal to this one. So, with this that uh, I believe nothing is left for uh, uh, this thing uh, cable chapters. So, I uh, sorry insulator chapters. So, there are uh, there are uh, uh, did I mean whatever was there varieties of insulators and other thing we have tried to cover, but whenever you have any questions or anything you please. Uh, put it into the forum or you can send mail to me right. So, all these all these questions other things will be clarified and uh, and uh, just uh, just this is uh, mathematics is less in this chapter theory is more you have to learn different type of insulators and other thing, but uh, uh, this is insulator cables these are the main part of the I mean uh, power main components of the power systems. So, in this course we will see next we will see the cables. So, next let us come to cables right. So, cable is a, a, a underground cable is a very big chapter right. So, somehow somehow I have tried to uh, condense it as much as possible particularly the number of diagrams and other thing because I found in the literature that underground cables is a it is not a small topic it is a very big topic 
So, somehow, uh, somehow I have to restrict it compared to because we have to cover many other things. So, so first is introduction regarding underground cable. First thing is you know that general knowledge is that underground cable is much more expensive than your overhead conductor at least 2.5 to 3 times uh, more than that your overhead conductor. So, naturally cables are very expensive, but many places we use cables, uh, particularly densely populated area or sometimes rural areas and many places in hilly areas I have seen also cables are uh, it is it is not like uh, buried in the ground, but it is on the you know it is to, from pole to pole uh, it is cable has been taken. So the anyway, so different type of uh, your cables are there. So we will come for first little introduction first one hour or so. I think it will be theory only for underground cables. Some of the diagrams I will show, but all is not possible in this video lecture class. And uh, somehow I have to condense this thing. So, first thing is in densely populated areas, large scale use of cable has been made for transmission and distribution of electrical energy. This is the first thing. So, able cable consists of a central conductor, later I will show you diagram and other thing. Central conductors with an insulation to isolate the conductors from each other and their surroundings. This is the thing, cable have to have in conductor then insulation, sheet, so many things, armor, so many things will be there. So, external protection is provided for protecting against mechanical damage, chemical reactions and moisture etc. because cables most of the cases it will be buried in the ground. Therefore, you have to see there should not be mechanical damage and there should not be chemical reactions and moisture etc. So, it should not there be external protection is required for the cable. The materials employed for conductor generally annual copper or aluminum, either copper or aluminum conductor is used for the cables, right. So, diagram another thing I will show later, uh, but all these things cannot be uh, cannot be put it here, I have to condense. So, the use of copper, that use of copper is limited to cables used for control circuit, signaling and communication, right. So, as, as you know that uh, your uh, copper will be expensive than aluminum. Uh, power cables use stranded or sector shaped aluminum conductors. I will show you the diagram later. Either it will be used stranded conductors the way we have seen no? the standard conductor like your one conductor around the 6 conductor then 12 then 18 those are uh, uh, the standard conductors or sometimes these sector shaped aluminum conductors are used. I will show you the diagram later. So, aluminum has a tendency to oxidize when exposed to air. So, we naturally have seen also aluminum has a that you know the tendency to oxidize and they because of this that the oxide field forms a very high resistance. So, special jointing techniques are necessary right for this thing for cable, jo cable uh, jointing. Suppose two cables are there when you joint it some special technique is required. So, some several jointing techniques such as soldering welding and compression jointing are employed, right. So, this is this is the thing, but for cables you have to have insulation, you have to have insulation. Therefore, when we come to the insulation, right, the conductors of a cable have to be covered by an insulation to isolate the conductors from each other and from their surroundings. Suppose, if you have a Mm, three phase uh, line, then three core cables, then each one has to be insulated from each other, otherwise there will be short circuit, right. Therefore, insulation is more important. So, insulating material should have, it should have a high dielectric strength, high insulation resistance, good mechanical strength and fourth one is to withstand temperatures from about minus 30 degree to over 100 degree Celsius, right. So, these properties are required and, and for from the testing only you have to see that whether this property holds or not for the insulator, right. So, some some properties of cable, some I mean these are the properties are required, main properties. So, typical some properties of cables are, look this material is one is XLP uh, uh, cable, then I will come to that one uh, most of the cables later, then polyethylene uh, thermoplastic, then ethylene propylene that is rubber, 
then butyl rubber, then PVC, then oil impregnated paper, right. So, different type of insulation, uh, there is typical properties of cable, right. So, dielectric strain for this one, kilovolt per millimeter is given. So, XLP is 18, many places XLP is used mostly, right. Then 21, then 15, 13, 20, 17 and 21. So, dielectric strain among all these, maximum is that polyethylene thermoplastic one, right. Therefore, your permittivity, 2.5, 2.3, XLP is 2.5 then ethylene propylene 2.8 and butyl rubber 3.2 and oil impregnated paper highest is 3.0, PVC is the highest 5 and oil impregnated paper is 3.6. Now, temperature rating one is maximum continuous, one is short time overload, uh, another is short circuit. So, I mean 90, if you look at that 90 here, then 75, 90, 85, 75, 80 more or less except polyethylene your polyethylene thermoplastic and PVC more or less all are 80, 90 the maximum continuous temperature that means that is your what you call temperature rating. Continu temp maximum continuous means at normal operating condition it can uh, withstand this continuous temperature. Now, short time overload if there is an overload right for, uh, for say for a very short time then uh, XLP is 130 and next your ethylene propylene the rubber 130 then others are there 110 that oil impregnated paper, then PVC 95 and so on all these things. Then short circuit, uh, it is 250 and this ethylene uh, propylene is 250, others are 200 or 150 that is the during short circuit the temperature rating. Short circuit last uh, your what to uh, not for longer duration uh, right. Uh, so, this is your typ typical properties of cable insulators, so different type of insulators are there. Next one is that VIR cable, this is vulcanized India rubber we call, it was developed in 1870 that is more nearly 147 years ago, but at that time anyway uh, those days uh, there was no electricity uh, in, uh, and in, in those days, right. It came uh, later, but anyway this, but this vulcanized rubber was used, I mean developed in 1870 and has a dielectric strain that about 10 to 20 kilo volt uh, uh, per millimeter. When I am uh, putting this uh, this thing began 1870, so just putting a question to you when the first of course, not high voltage uh, or, or high, you cannot say high voltage, but first transmission system or power transmission system when in which year it was started and which place. This is a quiz to you, right. Uh, so, you uh, this is a quiz to you, so you should find out and has a dielectric strength of about 10 to 20 kilo volt per millimeter and the dielectric constant is about 2.5. In this case, it is a vulcanized rubber, so sulfur actually mainly used as a vulcanizing agent. So, this insulation is limited to wiring cables for lighting and minor power installation, that means at low voltage level, this type of cable can be used because it is for lighting and minor power installation. Next one is that elastomer insulated cables, right. So, these are all coming from uh, polymers. So, elastomeric insulation includes rubber, butyl rubber, silicon rubber and ethylene propylene rubber, right. So, different type of if you I mean if you see those cables I mean uh, I mean in uh, your then you will see different type of insulations are used. So, of course, it depends from your uh, different uh, properties as well as cost is another important uh, aspect. So, since uh, natural rubber can be used only up to an operating temperature of 60 degree Celsius. So, considerable effort has been devoted to the development of synthetic elastomeric compounds with superior properties such that its operating temperature can be increased. So, details we will just condense it these are all uh, this thing different uh, insulation. For example, polyvinyl uh, chloride cable that PVC cables they call polyvinyl chloride is a synthetic material obtained from acetylene and can be produced in a number of grades depending on the polymerization process used right. PVC cables also used. So, it is the form of a white powder advantage is which is odorless, tasteless, chemically inert non-inflammable and insoluble. 
at ordinary temperature in all liquids. This is the major advantage is that it is chemically inert, non inflammable and insoluble at ordinary temperature in all liquids. This is actually this is the main advantage of this one, right. So, this is your what you call that PVC cable diagram other thing uh, construction I will come later. Then is in pure form it is rigid and brittle at low temperature, right. In pure form it is rigid and brittle at low temperature. I have seen somewhere the cables low, low tension cables that that cable was for, for nearly if I recall correctly the people told me nearly uh, uh, 25 to 30 years supplying power. Uh, cable is uh, uh, without any fault or anything when they were trying to replace it and I saw it in my eyes that when they were trying to replace those cable you know it was uh, it was uh, uh, I mean it was not in its uh, original conditions. So, it is it became very brittle right and uh, everything is uh, very loose, but as long as it was in uh, your under the ground or uh, this that there was no problem at all. So, anyway people I mean those uh, they have told me I have seen this one. So, when used for cable insulation it must be combined with a plasticizer whose function is to form a gel and the material plastic over the desired range of temperature right. Its mechanical properties are not as good as those of rubber and the insulation resistance is also lower than that of rubber. Insulation resistance is a great matter for cables right. Uh, so, however, it is inert to oxygen and almost inert to oils that means there will be no reaction and many acids and alkalis all uh, your alkalis also right. So, this is the advantage therefore, it is preferable to rubber in many environmental conditions. So, you have to consider many things which environment you are using the cables and accordingly you have to choose right. Then is next one is the polythene insulated cables. So, polythene is a straight chain polymer derived from ethylene. So, its electrical properties are very good. Number one is very low power factor at all frequencies, low dielectric constant and high resistivity right. This is your polythene insulated cables. It has a limited application as a power cable in your power cable insulant. However, a 3 core 11 kV self supporting aerial cable which can be used for rural distribution. Aerial cable means not buried in the ground, you can take it through the tower or you know or some kind of arrangement right. Due to its low weight, it can be suspended from the existing low voltage poles. That is why low voltage pole also you can uh, you can make it. I have seen somewhere, I mean I do not know nowadays it may be may not be there, but in hilly areas I have seen this aerial cable even it I saw that it is going uh, through the your uh, trees instead of pole because many trees are there. So, it was going I have seen it in the past. So, next one is that XLP cables that is cross links polythene cables XLP cables right. So, it is it has a low density polythene when vulcanized under control conditions results in cross linking of carbon atoms and produces cross link polythene. This is mostly that chemistry portion, so we will not cover that, but some general ideas right. This new material does not melt, but carbonizes at 250 to 300 degrees Celsius and has become very popular as insulating material right. So, XLP cables possess the advantages of it lightweight, then small overall cable dimension low dielectric constant and good mechanical strength. So, it has some properties that your what you call which uh, it can be preferable to compare to other cables right. So, mm, that means, these cables permit conductor temperatures of 90 degree Celsius and 250 degree Celsius under normal and short circuit conditions respectively. So, 90 degree normal is quite high and at short circuit 250 also it is ok and can be buried directly in soil as this inclusion uh, the as this insulation has low water absorption. So, that means, without any anything you just can your what you call you directly lay in the soil you might have seen the cable laying when how they are doing it right. 
So, these cables have been found to be very suitable for all voltages up to 33 kV, right. So, thank you very much.